Welcome. To finish off my series of four geometry formulas explained, let me now talk about the surface area of a sphere. Archimedes did this. Once he had the formula for the volume of a sphere, he found it's pretty quick and easy to get a formula for the surface area of the sphere as well. So here's a sphere. And we'll assume its radius is r. Da -da 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 -da. Radius r. And from the formula for the volume being 4 thirds pi r cubed, he was able to deduce that the surface area of this beast is 4 pi r squared. And let me show you how. Um, what he did is he imagined that the sphere is covered with lots of little triangular regions. So he triangulated the sphere, basically, and tons of these things all over. And we'll assume that each triangle is basically flat. Now, it's not going to be the sphere exactly. It's going to be a really close approximation of the sphere, but we could do it this way. And he said then, OK, for each of these little triangular regions, I'll do one over here, draw radii to the center of the sphere for this particular region here. And let's suppose the area of that triangle is B1. I'll call it base 1, the first triangle, tr base of triangle 1. It's B1, there we go. So what is the volume of that particular little shape? It's a cone. Now, we've just we learnt in a previous video that the volume of a cone is 1 third the area of the base times the height. So the volume of this cone is 1 third its base times its height. And its height is not exactly R, but it's really close to R. And I could do it for the next cone next to it. So its volume will be one third its base times r and so on. I could do this for all the triangles I have floating around. And in fact, if I take a common factor of a third and a common factor of r, I'm left with b1 plus b2 plus b3. I can do this for all the particular triangles that cover the entire sphere. This gives an approximation for the volume of a sphere. In fact, we could argue that if we did tighter and tighter triangles, the flatness of them will give a better, better approximation of the sphere, so it wouldn't be so much of a worry. And the true height of these little cones would actually be closer to being truly R. So Archimedes argued that as you did finer and finer approximations, this formula really wants to become the true volume of the cone, which we know is 4 thirds pi R cubed. This is what Archimedes argued. 1 third we make sense of, R we can make sense of. As we do finer and finer approximations, these Bs are really just the areas of triangles that cover the sphere. This wants to be the surface area. So he deduced from this that as you did fine and fine approximations, this, uh, this formula becomes more and more exact. So we could say that 1 third times r times the surface area of a sphere really does want to become 4 thirds pi r cubed, the true volume. We'll multiply, the, multiply both sides by 3, divide both sides by r, and then we're left with concluding that the surface area of a sphere must be 4 pi r squared. Which is amazing. Actually, that's, that's really quite an amazing formula. What it says is, if you took the equator and imagine this, this circle sitting inside the Earth this way with radius r, that uh, four of those bits of material, if you cut them out of material, could flop and cover the surface of the Earth perfectly. The surface of the Earth is just four of those circles there. That's quite a surprise. Anyhow, that's Archimedes' achievement. Coming from the volume of the sphere, he managed to reduce the surface area is 4 pi r squared. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you.